ever wonder if we live in a simulation? I'm not sure. I've never really thought about it. But I guess we just keep living until the game is over. Sounds like a plot twist in a sci-fi movie, right? But some folks are seriously pondering this, asking not just is this reality, but diving deeper into what even is reality. Imagine for a moment that everything around us, our morning coffee, the stars overhead, the memes on our phones, could actually be bits of a grand simulation. This idea has been around not just for years, but centuries, touching minds across ancient cultures and modern thinkers alike. Many people believe that the world around us is real, but philosopher Nick Bostrom suggests that we may actually be living in a computer simulation created by an advanced society. Meant to be understood in a literal sense, not that we can kind of metaphorically view the universe as an information processing physical system, but that there is some advanced civilization who built a lot of computers and that what we experience is an effect of what's going on inside one of those computers so that the, the world around us, uh, our own brains, everything we see and perceive and think and feel would exist because this computer uh, is uh, running certain programs. If this is true, it raises questions about our existence and the purpose of our lives. Bostrom's theory explores the idea that we could be artificial beings in a simulated world. While this may seem unsettling, it also opens up possibilities for understanding the nature of reality and human existence. Now, if you've ever lost hours in video games or marveled at CGI in movies, you know we're all about crafting digital realms, so if we ever get good enough to make a simulated universe, why stop at one? We'd likely build countless ones, maybe even simulating the early days of our own existence. And it's simulations all the way down, like a stack of digital matryoshka dolls. Even big brains like Elon Musk and Neil Tyson have weighed in, with Musk betting the odds are stacked against us being the real deal and Tyson hedging his bets at 50-50. If we are in a simulation, the reason that the, the, these higher beings would hold a simulation is to see what happens. Diving into the origins of everything, we hit the Big Bang, which, if you think about it, sounds as wild as any simulation scenario. No space, no time, just everything squished into a cosmic tennis ball, then bam. Universes, galaxies, and everything else. Fast forward to today, and we've got fancy computers and digital stuff. This leads to the simulation hypothesis, the idea that we're living in a giant digital world. Think of it like playing a video game. Everyone sees the same game differently, right? That's because each person's computer shows the game in a unique way. Before you dismiss this as being just some crazy conspiracy, consider the glitches. Ever heard of the Mandela Effect, where a bunch of people remember things one way, only to find out they're not that way at all? Like people swearing Nelson Mandela passed away in prison in the 80s, even if he actually didn't. Or the popular animated character Curious George, which is often falsely remembered to have a tail, when in fact he doesn't. These hiccups in collective memory could be little peaks behind the curtain, revealing the stitches in our simulated fabric. Or, what about those moments of deja vu or bizarre coincidences, or times when the world is just doesn't seem to behave how it's supposed to? Could these be the bugs in our grand program? Philip K. Dick, a famous writer, thought that when we experience deja vu, it's because someone or something tweaked our universe's settings, and now we're on a slightly different path. He suggested we're living in a reality that's been programmed, and the little glitches we notice are clues. When you feel that you already lived a moment before, according to him, that's the game world correcting itself. But let's not stop there. With about 200 billion trillion stars out there, you'd think we'd bump into alien neighbours, yet we've got silence. The Fermi Paradox is a big question about aliens in outer space. It's named after a scientist named Enrico Fermi. He was a smart guy who worked on nuclear stuff and won a Nobel Prize. The question he asked was simple. If aliens are real and can travel between stars, why haven't we seen any? This is strange because the universe is really big with billions of stars like our sun. So where are all the aliens? It's like looking at a huge playground and not seeing any other kids, even though you know they must be around somewhere. Scientists have lots of ideas, but no one knows for sure why we haven't bumped into any aliens. It's a big space mystery. The Drake Equation, 
formulated by Frank Drake in 1961, seeks to estimate the number of civilizations currently transmitting signals in the Milky Way. This equation considers various factors including the formation rate of hospitable stars, the existence of planets with suitable conditions for life, and the development of intelligent civilizations capable of interstellar communication. It's estimated that only in our galaxy there are at least 2,500 intelligent alien civilizations which may currently exist. Of course, this is just a guess, but shows why some scientists think it will be easy to discover alien life. Then there's the physics of it all. Max Tegmark, an MIT cosmologist, hints that the universe playing by strict rules feels a lot like a simulation. Even the speed of light has a limit, maybe to keep us from wandering off too far and finding the edges of the game. James Gates, a theoretical physicist, stumbled upon computer code deep in the equations of string theory. Yes, actual zeros and ones, like the DNA of the universe, was written in code. And speaking of DNA, scientists have managed to store data in it, further blurring the lines between biology and technology. It's a manufacturing system. All of life is a way to create copies of things or to replicate information, including storage of information. Actually, the hard drives are probably one of the worst ways for long-term storage. DNA might end up being the best way to have you know, millennia or you know, even longer scale storage where you want something that has redundancy that's built in and it can store and can be put at really cold temperatures and survive even cosmic rays. Nature seems to follow a pattern too, the Fibonacci sequence, which says that each number is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. For example, zero and one is followed by one, two and three by five, and so on. It seemed like this sequence is found in everything from the petals on a flower to the spirals of galaxies. Some say it's coincidence, but others wonder if it's part of the programming. And if we count these spirals, you'll see that there are 34 going one way and 55 going the other way. And these are both numbers that appear back to back in the Fibonacci sequence. To simulate a universe as vast and complex as ours, we'd need technology far beyond what we currently have. But with the rate technology is improving, and according with the Moore's law, who's to say what's possible? Elon Musk once pointed out how video games evolved from simple blips on a screen to nearly lifelike experiences in just a few decades. Just imagine how advanced technology will be in 50 or even 200 years in the future. Of course, if we don't blow ourselves up till then. So, what if our reality is just a very advanced game and we're all characters in it? Of course, we will need a supercomputer to run this game. And we also need the computing power to keep track of everything is happening. If we actually want to do it, specialists say that we will need to harvest energy from a star or even a black hole to actually meet the energy requirements for such a big simulation. That's why, for example, famous physicist Dr. Michio Kaku isn't buying it. He says simulating a whole universe just isn't scientifically doable. He thinks the only computer capable of doing that is, well, the universe itself. But hold on a second there, Doc. When we play video games, the game only shows details of what we can see and interact with. It doesn't show everything at once. This is similar to how our reality works. Just like in a game, things that are far away aren't fully detailed until we get closer. It's like a trick with pixels and polygons. And if we speak about games, No Man's Sky is built on procedural generation. That means each planet, creature, ship, multi-tool and other items are created procedurally using algorithms in the game itself, rendering diversity through each item created. The universe in this game is basically endless. So what if our reality works in the same way? If we put it to the test, we might just find some clues. Take the double slit experiment, for instance. When we fire particles through two slits, they create a wave interference pattern, not the clumpy pattern you'd expect. But here's where it gets wild. When we watch those particles with detectors, they behave differently. They suddenly act like solid objects, not waves. It's like they know they're being watched. But as soon as we unplug those detectors, they go back to their wavy ways. They basically went back in time. It's like the universe is playing a weird game of hide and seek. If our universe is a giant simulation, like a cosmic video game, it could explain why some things don't quite add up. Think about it. Stars and galaxies might just be fancy projections, only becoming detailed when we take a closer look. It's like saving energy by only rendering the important stuff. Of course, some people say this simulation theory is just another way to talk about God. After all, both ideas involve some higher power beyond our understanding, 
It's a bit like saying, hey, maybe our universe is just a super high tech project by some cosmic creator. But hold on a sec. Whether you believe in God or simulation theory, the real question is what difference does it make? Both sides argue about faith, science, and what happens after we die. But hey, nobody's got all the answers, right? Let's keep finding out about the cool things in our universe, whether it's a simulation or not, and just, you know, enjoy the ride.